welcome to Coffee Break with the Mayor. I look forward to all of you joining me every month as we grab our cups and have a coffee break with the mayor. Well, hello, everyone. Yes, it's the second episode of Coffee Break with the Mayor. It's your Mayor President, Sharon Westenbroom. I am so excited about this podcast and uh, our guest today, but guest in the future, and just having some real meaningful uh, conversations with movers and shakers and I want you to be inspired. I want you to be informed uh, about what's taking place in Baton Rouge. And we're going to uncover some real unique stories in this process. We're going to showcase talent. You name it, it's going to be right here on our conversation with the mayor as we take a coffee break. So the time goes by so quickly. Let me get right into today's uh, guest. Our guests for today are uh, Narisha Kurtz Glover, and she is the president, CEO, founder of NRK Construction. Welcome, Narisha. And David Fleshman, who is an attorney with Brazil Saxe Wilson. Welcome, Narisha and David. I'm so glad to have you both here. Now, I'm going to be very honest with you. Um, This conversation was really motivated uh, by this 225 uh, magazine, the June edition, by the way, that says Generation Now. Um, Narisha and David are actually uh, featured in this issue. And I found it very insightful because I have a lot of conversations uh, with individuals and we talk about, you know, talent retention, getting young professionals uh, to stay in Baton Rouge. And I, I want to start off with some information first uh, because, you know, we always talk about these generations. So, The greatest generation was born 1901 through 1924. The silent generation, 1925 through 1945. The baby boomer generation, 1946 through 1964. Generation X, 1965-1979. Millennials, 1980 through 1994. Generation Z, 1995 through 2012 and Gen Alpha will be uh, born 2013 through 2025. A little known fact, we're often talking about these uh, generations. So um, this article says generation now. Now, I don't know what age group that is. (laughs) I think that's a compilation of ages. So uh, Narisha and David, uh, without telling too much information. Uh, what generation do you put yourself in? I love to claim Generation X, uh, but I think that's just because I'm a spirit, and there are moments when I can have an old soul. But um, in more conversations, I'm really a millennial. <laughs> yeah, I feel the same way. Yeah, I struggle to 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 uh, admit that I'm uh, a millennial. It, it feels too young. Uh, I think we're we're at the one extreme, one, one end of the millennial. Um, uh, process, but uh, but I'm also a millennial. So uh, you know, I always say that my life is an open book. Uh, you can find out my name, my height, my weight, my then maybe not my weight. I try to keep that a secret as much as possible. Uh, but when I was born, where I was born, so there's no um, secret that I am in the baby boomer generation. That's right. I know some of you all may not have thought that, but yes, I am a baby boomer and proud of it. But today I want to know, how do we keep millennials and our Gen Z generation here in Baton Rouge? We'll start with you, David. Well, it's uh, that is the most important question, and it's something that I think there's been a lot of dialogue about how do we do that and different strategies for how, how we do it. Um, I, you know, I think when we say how do we keep talent here, and the different generations, the younger generation, you know, that's prob. Typically, that's probably. I think of that as being more problematic. That the younger generation does not, you know, they want to spread their wings. They want to go get a lot of different experiences at a lot of different companies, you know, and try different, um, you know, different workplaces out, which is, seems to be very different than I would say, 
you know, um, the baby boomer generation where you got a good job and you were very loyal to that company and you work, you might work there for your whole career. I think as we talk about generational differences, that is, that is a major one. But I think if we can send some of our best and brightest out into the world, and, um, you know, I think we have one very good example of that sitting right here of, you know, her experience being able to, to go to D.C. for a while, um, to go all over the country and then come back here. I think we, our talent kind of grows, I think, and it, it helps build more resources. So, you know, I, I think the way that we do it, and there's just obviously no clear-cut answer here, but I think we have to make it a city that is, you know, has a, has a vibe. It's a vibrant city. It's open. Um, it's, we have an art scene. You know, we have, it's not just surrounded by sports. You know, I think we put a lot of emphasis on sports. The reality is we're not highlighting all of the incredible things that people are doing here in the arts and in right. the vision. So I think being more than just, you know, a, a college town that has two, you know, very sizable universities here, I think we have to be more than that and, and to, to, to just create the infrastructure and, and the creative space that says we are, we can do it all. We can cook, That's we can right. paint, you know, we can build, we can, we can do all of that together in an environment that you will love to be in, that people care about you. But um, I do think we need to get people out to see other, yeah. other yeah. Um, environments as well. Yeah. That's uh, very interesting uh, that you talked about the vibe today. My cup is good vibes mm -hmm. only. Uh, <laughs> and I, I do think that, um, uh, there are so many unique aspects of our community. Um, and one of the conversations that I have been having with a lot of people is how do we uh, identify ourselves or capture our identity uh, beyond being, and we're proud that we've got LSU, Southern here, BRCC, beyond being a college town. There's so much uh, uh, to us as a city. So, Narisha, um, David was sharing that you left, you came back. Tell us your story and how do you think that fits in with uh, career, profess career professionals here in Baton Rouge? So my story, so I'm originally from Tioga, Louisiana, which is outside of Alexandria, for those who do not know. Um, came to school for LSU, got my undergrad and master's, and then I left. I moved to D.C., I moved to California, I moved to Southern Virginia, and then I decided it was time to return home. And so in conversation, when I think about my two girls and what I want their future to look like, and when I talk to friends who I went to college with, 95% of them say, we do not want our children to stay, not in Baton Rouge, but not in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. And it's not because we're anti-Louisiana or anti-Baton Rouge, mm -hmm. it's that our parents worked hard for us to have more than what they have. Mm -hmm. Now, we're working hard for our children to have more than what we have. And having more than what we have means giving them an opportunity to mm -hmm. see the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about uh, how do we keep talent here, I think it's actually divided into two groups. It is our children who we are sending out to see the rest of the world. What do we do to make it an attractive place for them to return to once yes. they've had that yeah. time to explore? And then for those people who were not born and raised here, how do we attract them to the city? Yeah. And I think we're right when we talk about uh, vibes, when you are, when you talk about one thing about the city, then you are choosing to not talk about something else, right? So if we are spending a lot of our time talking about our universities and the sports at mm -hmm. atmosphere, what is it that we're not spending time talking about? Um, I have a mommy group right now, mm -hmm. and we have a checklist where we're trying to visit every single Breck Park that exists awesome. here in the community. Because it's a shame that we pay our tax dollars but don't know everything that is out there. So how do we do a better job promoting our Breck um, system. How do we do a better job saying, look, we may not have always had the greatest of schools, but let's tour the facilities now that according to our um, tax millage plan, mm -hmm. many of these schools are being torn down and we're building new state of the art facilities. How do we promote that as it relates to mm -hmm. our K through 12 education? What are things that we have put in place that Yes, crime stinks. It stinks everywhere. Ours is no different than everywhere else. But what are the things that we are doing that is progressive and innovating that we can highlight to other individuals so that mm -hmm. they know about it? So it's like, how do we how do we figure out how to capitalize on those yeah, things? Yeah. And a lot of the conversations that I have, um, I think 
we as a city, city parish, uh, but those of us who live in this city and thrive and prosper, we have to do a better message of being ambassadors uh, for all of the great things that are going on. I mean, I love that. We have a number one park system here in Baton Rouge. And I, I haven't been to all of the parks. I try to get around to them, uh, but they are a gym here. You know, just recently I heard uh, that the symphony is getting ready to do a celebration of hip hop. I'm going to go to that concert, you know. I think that's very unique and speaks to our arts community, our culture, uh, you know, our, our everything about us. But we have to get those things out. Now, something else. I don't want to talk too much, but I have you all are just, you know, triggers. So um, you talked about people going away. For example, uh, my granddaughter, who... Uh, Born, raised here, uh, went to school here, graduated from high school, but went to is attending college in Washington D.C. at Howard uh, University, and uh, I don't know right now if she's going to come back immediately. She still feels a very strong tie. I think it's good for her to get that exposure somewhere else because she's already talked about the differences that she has encountered being a student there versus growing up in Louisiana. Uh, but I don't think we have to have one over the other. I think our, our children should be able to venture out and see the world and go different places and then take all of that and come back at the right time. So. Uh, let's talk about some of the unique opportunities that the two of you have found as young professionals. You started your own uh, construction company. I did. I did. So I moved uh, back here, and a little bit about my background is I was actually in education fundraising. Um, had fundraised for K-12 through schools, but also had raised uh, fundraised for our higher education institutions. And I enjoyed fundraising, but it felt like a little like rinse and repeat for me. And so for me, I wanted to find something that I could do where I could manage projects, budgets, and people. And a friend to me said, well, why don't you do construction? And so that's what I did. I started NRK Construction. We're a commercial construction firm that specializes in renovations, um, new construction, tenant build-outs, and pre-engineered um, buildings. And what I want for my business to do is to want to be an economic driver in the community. I want my business to be an example to people that you don't have to be beholden to your degree or whatever particular field that you're in, that you can chart whatever your own path is. And, and Baton Rouge has afforded me that opportunity to create whatever I wanted my path to do. And that's something I think to be celebrated about mm -hmm. the city is creating your own path. It's not without its challenges, but life is not without its challenges. Um, but I, I, I appreciate and I'm excited about the the fact that I'm getting to pave or create my own path here. Now, David, you're from Baton Rouge, Baton Rouge and so uh, you went to law school? I went to uh, undergrad in law school here, here. both at okay. LSU. Did you ever think about going away? I did. Mm -hmm. I did and applied to a lot of different um, different schools all around the country. Um, had the opportunity to walk on to the basketball team at LSU, but and, and uh, that in tops was okay. really the reason, okay. I would say. But I never envisioned that I would only – stay in Baton Rouge yeah. um, all of my life. So, yeah. um, I, you know, I think we have we have good contrast here, but yeah. I, but in my mind, it was, I've always wanted to go live in DC for a little mm -hmm. while or go live in a different city and mm -hmm. make those connections. But I, and with always with the idea of coming back here, I would say. Right. And you've had an opportunity, I'm sure, to explore a lot of different uh, areas with that big sure. paycheck you're making as <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know. well you know in the law in, in the law the legal world is, is an interesting yeah. um component you know once you take the a state's bar mm -hmm. you know you you pretty much here um unless you want to go through the process mm -hmm. of taking another state's bar um but you know baton rouge is a fantastic place to practice law and the baton rouge bar association the professionalism of baton rouge attorneys is really unmatched across the state i would say um, it, you know, it is from the judges and the involvement of the judges with the attorneys, the Baton Rouge Bar Association, the federal judges here. It is a really good place and a unique place to practice law. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of that's because of the big city but small city feel. Mm -hmm. You know, the, there's kind of a running thought that New Orleans will, you may have a, an interaction with one attorney and never see him again. Or, you know, here in Baton Rouge, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you're not calling that attorney back or if you're, you know, um, hanging up on somebody yeah. or being rude, 
you're probably going to end up being, you know, at a ball game with them um, or coaching, you know, coaching your kids together. Your kids are going to be in school together. Mm -hmm. And so there's more of a sense of community. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, practicing law here is um, is really a, a great place. And mm -hmm. it's also a, a, an opportunity. And, and I've had the opportunity to, to teach at the law school it's at, uh, as an adjunct professor okay. and I, I teach sports law. And it's really a fun, uh, I enjoy it way more than I, than I thought that I would, but it, it to really encourage the student athletes to, I mean the students, mm -hmm. to think outside of the box, you know, with NIL opportunities, ways to try to connect Southern's law program with Baton Rouge, with mm -hmm. LSU's law, law program. Um, the athletic departments, you know, we saw what, what happened last year when the bands collaborated to come yes. together. It is a powerful yes, movement absolutely. of the city, and it's, it's absolutely necessary. Yeah. Uh, when you think of Baton Rouge and you think of uh, different places, experiences, uh, what is your favorite hidden gem uh, or favorite spot in Baton Rouge, Narisha? Oh, my favorite spot. Well, hmm. So right now I'm going to say the zoo. But in full disclosure, I'm on the zoo board. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I really, really, really love zoos. Like, okay. travel the country. If we're really? going on a family trip, we're oh. going to the zoo. And it's by me saying that multiple times. It's probably how I ended up on the zoo board. <laughs> I love what we are doing with the zoo right now. It is undergoing massive renovations. Zoo renovations right. always take a really long time because if you are renovating in place, you've got to put those animals somewhere. Y'all don't know where we're relocating <laughs> these animals so that we can build it. So, like, we just opened the pygmy exhibit. Oh. Um, by the end of the year, we're going to be opening up the giraffe exhibit, and you're going to be able to feed the giraffes. Like, awesome. When, but when you have little kids and you bring them there, like, every time feels like the first time. Mm -hmm. And so getting to watch my children play there and experience it and know that – for multiple years to come, they're going to get to keep seeing new things mm -hmm. um, because we're continuing to renovate. Mm -hmm. That really excites me. Um, so that's 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 my secret place right now. It's not really secret, but go it's my to place. the zoo. Go to the zoo. Go to the zoo. <laughs> yeah, I, you, I would say the. I mean, I, I think the Breck Park. I, I would say most residents understand how awesome the Breck Parks are, but they, like you said, they're not being as as good ambassadors as we could to highlight that. But I, I think on a you know Saturday morning. Um, you know, the soccer scene with young kids at, on Burbank or um, at, at any of the parks is an incredible scene. I mm -hmm. really enjoy that and see just so many people out there. It, yeah. It's almost overwhelming <clears throat> how many people you see in the, the community out there. Okay, the final question as we begin to wrap up. Uh, this is your mentoring moment. What advice would you give to other young professionals considering moving to or staying in Baton Rouge? I'm gonna repeat the question and give you some time to think. What advice would you give to other young professionals considering moving to or staying in Baton Rouge? Your mentoring moment. Um, I'll, take a, I'll take a stab. You go ahead. Uh, you you know, I, the, the, my, first, my first thought to that is that, you know, there's a unique opportunity to lead here. Um, we have problems here like every other city has. But there is a uniqueness to, you know, the support, the young group and the support of getting to know people in the city. You know, we love supporting each other in opportunities and fundraisers and um, new opportunities. There's, um, you know, we used to do a gumbo cook-off here often to help raise money for the children's shelter. Um, and so you're, there is a, a really awesome opportunity to come to, together and to create something that you're not going to be able to do in Dallas or in Houston. Um, you know, and, and there's a support here and really there's a need. I mean, you know, traffic, we, we, we don't need to get sidetracked on all of the, you know, crime and traffic. I think we, I think that's an excuse a lot of times for why we don't, why we don't do something, why we don't. Um, the reality is, is that if you don't like traffic, you know, move to Mississippi. I mean, <laughs> if you have a, a traffic expertise, we'd love to hear from, from ways and get involved, um. But I think the most important thing about Baton Rouge is that there is significant opportunity to come together and to really effectuate change, um, you know, on a rapid scale. Marisha. Um, okay, so for those individuals who are outside thinking about moving to Baton Rouge, I would say get the Visit Baton Rouge magazine or go to their website. And as quickly as you can, do everything that you can on it. Because the challenge is, is that once you've gotten comfortable in your network, then you like start not exploring what else the city has to offer and you don't want to not know what else the city has to offer. 
For those people who are living here, if you want your city to be different, stop complaining and do something about it. And in order to do something about it, you have got to explore what it is that you're interested in. You may think that you know what it is, but you're not really sure. So it may require that you attend a city council or a BREC meeting. It might require that you volunteer at an organization, but eventually figure out what it is that pulls on your heartstrings and then do the hard work of connecting, identifying solutions, doing research, and then be a part of the solution. Don't just complain about it. Awesome, awesome mentoring moment, awesome conversation. I'm so glad that you all joined me uh, with Coffee Break with the Mayor today. And as I said, this is our second episode. Make sure you tell someone else about taking a coffee break with the Mayor. And if you're a young professional or if you're a baby boomer and you have a suggestion or recommendation on how we can uplift our city and community, why don't you email me at mayor at brla.gov, mayor at brla.gov. Give me your suggestion, your recommendation, and let's continue to be Red Stick Rising.